Welcome to Postcards from Texas. I'm Mike Vance. This week we'll visit one of Houston's oldest churches and we'll grab some ice cream. But first, for over 50 years, October in Huntsville meant the prison rodeo. Lee Simmons, who was the, the man in charge of the prison system back then, came up with this idea and conveyed it to his uh, warden, uh, Warden Wade, and uh, Mr. Moore, who was his education man and, and, uh, and the livestock fellow. But it was mainly, I, I think, at first, I don't think they ever had any intention of it being a big rodeo. It was going to be kind of a, well, the crops are in, let's do something for the employees and the inmates. September and October would pretty well wrap up the cotton picking and then all of the other crops being brought in. And it was kind of a barbecue celebration. And if you go on down the road uh, a couple of years later, there's newspaper articles that talk about, you know, they, they sold all the seats and then they'd sell standing room only and still had people in a line two blocks long trying to get in that they couldn't let in. And so you'll read in the next week's paper that they're building more stands hoping to get them ready for the, the rodeo the following week. You know? It was so popular, they soon needed a bigger venue. When they got started, there was a baseball stadium there, a prison baseball stadium. They had a good baseball team. Uh, Semi-pro baseball was big in Texas at that time, and they used it. Uh, and then in the late 40s, they, they uh, started building the brick arena. I believe at the end, and they had remodeled it in the 70s, if I recall correctly, that it would hold a little over uh, 20,000, maybe 22,000, so 22, 23,000, I believe. Crowds were consistently good for the prison rodeo. Put together every October, every Sunday in October, rain or shine, made no difference. From my memory, the stadium was always really full. It was, you know, thousands and thousands of people. The town just filled up. They're outside this town, they bring buses in here from Louisiana. If you had an October that had five Sundays in it and the weather was good those five weekends, they could pretty much depend on over 100,000 people showing up that year for the rodeo. It was easy to run into people who came every year for a rodeo. We still have people come in this museum all the time that say, oh, we used to go every year. My family went every year to a rodeo. And I have to admit, my, my mother and dad did the same thing. They'd come down, you know, at least one Sunday and watch a rodeo. Not all spectators got to go home after the show. And they would bring inmates in from the other, other prison units, rotate them in, and, and they would come. They had their own little section with a double fence around it and, and razor wire up at the top. It was a, a, a good thing for them because not all of them got to come to the rodeo, and certainly a few a handful of them got to participate in it. See, he weren't going to come unless he were acting right and working hard and all that. In some respects, the prison rodeo was similar to others. It was run pretty much like you see in all the professional uh, rodeos today. Uh, it, they had the same shoot arrangements and had, uh, uh, had the same drawing system that they had. There's really no difference from what you see in the, in the Houston uh, rodeo, except it's a lot different with the stock and the participants. <laughs> that stock was mostly brought in. The stock that was used in the first rodeos, at, at least the cattle I know, were prison cattle. In the years that I worked with the prison system, they were contracted. You had someone that uh, furnished rodeo stock and they'd bring it in. There were entertainers like big commercial rodeos. Uh, Bill Bailey was uh, working at a, rode a, a radio station out of Pasadena, a western station, and uh, uh, they used him as a, one of their main contacts uh, because he did have good contact with those folks. And they, they tried to pick up entertainers that would be recognized uh, either in the western field or uh, in the movie uh, area. My gosh, you got to see some, for free, some good entertainers sometimes. I mean, Willie Nelson, Dolly Parton, Tammy Wynette, George Jones, George Strait. I mean, you got to see a lot of, a lot of neat people there. There were definitely events that were unique to Huntsville. You'd have maybe all the chutes open up at one time and a rider would come out on a bull or a horse. I mean, you'd have eight guys in the arena riding all at one time. The hard money event was, was easily the, the favorite of the crowd. I mean, I've heard some big roars go up out there during that event and it, uh, basically they had uh, 
20, 25 inmates on the end of the arena opposite from the chutes. Most of them in red shirts. And to be honest with you, I think there was more than one occasion where they would maybe get that bull a little wild up while he was in the chute, maybe with a hot shot. And they'd release that big rascal out into that arena with a sack, tobacco sack tied on his head, tied to his horns, and he'd lay, laying on his head. And of course, the object was for one of those inmates to get that sack off and run up to the judge with it. And it got pretty exciting sometimes when you get one brave enough to get around that bull, especially when he first come out and was really mad. They had a monkey, and, and in fact, I guess you'd say a monkey family that they raised inside the prison there at the walls back in the 30s. And the male monkey w was out in the rodeo arena at times. Another idea didn't work out so well. In the mid 50s, the uh, prison system realized that they had a uh, fellow who had been a paratrooper in World War II, and the idea was that they would have they would get him in a plane with a parachute and have the pilot fly over the rodeo arena, and this fellow jump out and, and land in the rodeo arena. And they tried it on the I guess the tryout Sunday before the rodeo. And if I recall correctly, he round, wound up on somebody's roof here in town that didn't know this was happening and scared the people half to death. But apparently the next four or five Sundays, however many Sundays there were that October went by and he never got in the rodeo ran. The skill level of the Cowboys varied. Well, they did have tryouts. Uh, they'd start that probably two months in advance, the rodeo. And if there were some new folks that uh, had volunteered or wanted to try to get in there, they'd hold tryouts as best they could. I remember whether it was on Saturday or Sundays, but it was a couple of weekends before the, the rodeo. And those guys would come in there, and you know, a lot of them, I don't think had ever been around a horse or a bull before, and they'd get on there and get thrown all over the place. But they'd be able to pick out enough of them to make good riders in the rodeo. And some of them were, were good riders. Yeah, I think, I think some of them thought, hey, this will be fun, and I, I think I can do this. And then, boy, you get up there, and that, that horse bronks the first time, and, you're going one way and he's going the other, and it's not as easy as it looked, I think. The perception of inmate cowboys added to the allure. But, but the idea of these guys were incarcerated, you know, and, and there was kind of this idea they had nothing to lose, so it was just kind of wild. Well, I would have to say that the inmates took more risks than you'd see in a normal rodeo. Maybe that's just something we've all conjured up, but on the other hand, I just can't imagine a bunch of regular cowboys getting down there and trying to take a sack off a mean bull's head. I just don't think that would happen very much. Many people feel that the Texas prison rodeo should never have gone away. Uh, most of the folks there didn't really understand what started, had no uh, allegiance to it, no reason to keep it up, didn't want to fool with it, rather be doing something else. The prison system management said at that time that the brick stands were unsafe and they didn't have the money to fix them. I would think there's some truth to that in that they were going, they had just gone through a court case in which it cost them a lot of money and they were having to do a, a lot of things to refurbish old units and get ready to build new units. As far as the rodeo arena being in bad shape, they had free labor, people who knew how to fix stuff like that and, and uh, then when they tried to tear it down the following year, they didn't get a bit of it on the ground other than the facade bricks, which you and I could have took those off. So it couldn't have been in too bad a shape. And as far as the money goes, you know, Louisiana is still having a rodeo over there every year, and I don't think they're doing it losing money. I think we had people managing the prison system who uh, had come here from out of state and didn't really understand the significance of the rodeo, especially to this community and how much money it brought in, and uh, how there was some good PR in it. It's hard to find places in the prison system to have positive public relations, but that was one of them. Up next, Houston's First Presbyterian.